Pithra and Ike versus Pokemon Trainer and Lucina. Uh, still the Pith Pithra and Ike. It's Aegis. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, call, I'll say Aegis. It's okay. <laughs> I've never played Xenoblade 2. I just think I it sounds I. terrible. Oh, it does. <laughs> it, it definitely does. Uh, anyway. Uh, Myra. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, obviously. So like, Aegis are gonna be like a, a just by default. Like they they're gonna be a good doubles character. You have Mithra's like incredible movement, and she's tiny. She's got a small frame with oh, like yeah. a big swing, and all of her moves are nair. And so like covering the you know uh, the vertical and horizontal like when she's moving around and stuff. Uh, and then you know Pyra also a bunch of nairs. So yeah. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, starting off pretty. Uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty e uh, even thus far. You're actually seeing, uh, I believe, oh no, that's Blackbird uh, sticking mostly Pyra at the start of this. Uh, after a little bit with Mithra, which makes a uh, makes a bit of sense. You're trying to maintain control. You're uh, you're holding on to a you're holding on to a lot of stage, and Myth uh, Pyra with these massive tilts are able to kind of combat the the larger bodies that are going to be swinging around. Also, I want to point out that. Uh, this, the hurtbox shifting on both Pyra and Mithra back air is ridiculous. They curl up into little, like into morph ball sized people, but that is a save, an incredible save by Ragnarok, I believe. Just being able to, to push, to push, uh, push Blackbird off stage and then save with the, uh, with the ether afterward. It grants them a two stock lead, but not one that's definite. I'm surprised that Stretch went for up smash as well as an attempted combo instead of going for up tilt, but either way, Nair is able to close it out on the Mithra. What is going on? <laughs> just, just, I love that from Soul Surge. Just like, yeah, I'm just going to rapid jab here, and I know my teammate will get him into this. Stretch kind of hold, uh, fight his, fight their way out of the corner as it's going range for range right now. Great combo from Stretch, trying to separate this into a pair of 1v1s. I like that from Solcer, feigning forward to help his teammate before getting the counter hit, though it ends up being Stretch that dies from the Ivysaur up air, which is uh, nevertheless unfortunate. And now we're beginning to see, like, well, actually, I was going to say the red team is uh, was building a small lead, but now with Blackbird uh, losing their second stock, we're in a chance where things can shift, and shifted they have. Blue team now taking a, a tiny lead. Basically, Solster just needs to hang on to this stock, uh, and we'll see how far they can uh, pull ahead. You know, already see Solster on Charizard, turning into a super heavy, uh, so he's, he's definitely trying to be here for a while. Yeah, which we, uh, it kind of begs the question of like how much punishment can Stretch really take? Because if you're forcing Solcer to play this super heavyweight, as Stretch ends up swatting away at his team at their teammate, it's exactly yep. like this, right? Yep. Like you just focus the smaller one, and now you have to kill a Charizard at 160 and try to, instead of trying to focus them with Stretch hounding at you. Yep. Yet all of this rage is going to be fiending for Charizard with things like up smash and back air just covering so much space. Yeah, one of the good things about Charizard, like, yeah, in general, is that even though he's big, he actually still has some pretty, like, quick moves and, like, great ground speed. The character, like, moves like, way faster than you would expect for uh, someone of that of that weight class. Oh, yeah. You know, a really good burst range uh, uh, dash attack just kind of just comes out just with tree trunk of the leg. But doesn't matter because he's out of here. And now we have a 1v1 happening uh, between... Uh, Ragnall and uh, Stretch. Ike versus Lucina. Uh, honestly, not the most uncommon matchup. So, no, not a little preview side. of singles. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I guess hopefully <laughs> now that these two players aren't in the same pool, but they're going to have to get that run back a little bit later. Just it when it comes with the territory for Ike. Like, if you know how to count, if you know how to counterplay the quick draw, suddenly Ike's recovery goes from passable to god awful. <laughs> yep. But that was a super clean uh, wraparound from Stretch after one failing to guard his teammate and dying first, and forcing to take a stock while Solcer was at 160. Being able to close out the game, 
sweeps away all of that uh, bad sentiment, all that bad juju. It's like, all right, but we won game one, so it's fine. Yep. <laughs> so we have Stretch and Solster banning FD and Smashville. Um, I can kind of understand that, you know, you want to have a lot of, you still want to have a lot of space. Uh, you can really take advantage of the fact that like Pokemon Trainer can turn into a heavy. So if they end up having to go to a stage with larger blast zones uh, or just a large stage in general, it looks like we're just running it back to PS2. So yeah, it's kind of it's it. still gonna stand, you know. Uh, PS2, the widest legal stage. Uh, it, the stage is massive, but it has normal ceiling. Uh, and it actually makes the side blast zones a little bit uh, closer to yes. the edge as well, which yep. is uh, definitely great for care for uh, I guess both Ike and for everybody on the screen because you either you can land Charizard F tilt and that's going to be killing a lot earlier. Lucina F smash and and, uh, and F tilts all these nares. Oftentimes the uh, the best thing that ends up killing for Aegis is actually four air. It feels like, especially for uh, for edge guarding purposes. So that's going to be clean. It's either way. It's it's really not hurting anybody. And since the game was brought down to a one v one, you're not like, trying to change too much. Just a little bit of micro decision making is all that takes for that game to for that game to turn from a loss to a win for red team. Yeah, and we're already seeing that like red team is doing a pretty good job of like. They're, they're putting on more damage than a uh, blue team is dealing out. So, like, we're already at a point where, yep, blue team is going to start losing stocks and lose two of them uh, in, clean. like, the same two seconds. So now we have a really solid lead because never mind. Okay, but you st it's still yeah. <laughs> it's still Mithra, and Mithra can be incredibly hard to hit when they want to be. Yeah. Uh, of course. Okay, you edge know what? Guarding. Edge yeah. guarding. <laughs> Great job by the blue team just, you know, uh, being where they need to be. Uh, honest, you know what? Honestly, like it kind of just shows like the two stocks that Red Team just lost shows that like the weaknesses uh, of their of the character picks being that those characters do struggle to come back. You know, these are characters that have strained recoveries, and you know if you're able to uh, put them in a position where they don't want to be, they might not come back. But just the like <laughs> the second stock of a uh, Soul Sir and so long. Yeah, it's a rough one to be for sure because like when they're on stage, suddenly you have like access to huge reversal options and huge and huge killing options, which of course uh, Pyra has all of that in spades. And now a back again to the two stock deficit for blue team, and that's really been the iota of this of this set thus far. It feels like red is red team is making statements, and blue team has been responding in kind. But a couple of minor adjustments, and those statements are going to uh, stand and not have any sort of rebuttal as the spot dodge into the prominence revolt. And I love that again from Ragnarok being able to follow up from anywhere with Ike's massive arcing up air. So, so uh, good the awareness that are coming out from both uh, sides of Red Team. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention these F smashes that are just be swinging yeah, and that, this yeah. way. I was gonna say, I, can I just can we just like appreciate the fact that Blackbird is just like I'm gonna put this out here. All right, if, if you get hit by it, it's your fault. You know, because like it's, it's such a position where like it was pretty safe to go for. You know, you have your partner right behind you, and oh 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 oh, oh I barely making it back, but does it? And then that actually messed up Stretch's recovery, or well. Edge guard turn recovery. Yeah, the reversal was crazy, and the rising flame nova. I love to see that as well. You're putting on just so much. Up, oh, up. Oh, what are we they gonna do? Rotate. Boom! Oh, that was so good. Oh my god. <laughs> that was actually super tight. I. We need a replay of that because not only is this like this right here. You see, we get a nice, a nice little aerial, and then the jump into the throw means that right. This spot right here means that they're rotating. Yep. The other thing was just like just the reaction that uh, Blackbird had to get into the right position and it's still connected. Like, boom. Like, not even like time to like stand there and like be set up. Like, ran into the position and got it. You know? That was so awesome. Just be watching them rotate their offense like this is Rocket League or something. Boom. And still follow up with that up, uh, with the up smash. Barely clipped Charizard, but yeah. uh, I mean. Catching the tail end of that. So yeah, really good stuff uh, uh, by Ragnall and Blackbird. Bringing it back. 
that's that's some clean ass doubles. <laughs> when yeah. things work in doubles, they really, really look cool. Just offensive, uh, offensive spread, acknowledging when to change, when to head back, and hey, no better time to head back as uh, Pyra when you don't have any attacks available. Swapping out for uh, for Ragnarok's Ike, it just it all it all right, we put together to, super well. Small battlefield. I don't. I, I like it. I like it a lot. I don't hate it. Because what the the, the benefits for Pokemon Stadium two for both Ike and uh, Pyra mostly is that they could throw around their reversal options pretty uh, frequently and not feel too bad about the punish that they're getting as long as they're in center stage. Now, small battlefield eliminates part of that. You still have to be careful of getting hit by think by both upbees out of shield. But the wider platforms, as well as the smaller stage, means that you're able to exert a lot more control with, oh, yeah. uh, with this, both uh, Lucina and Do not be uh, fooled. PPT. Do not be fooled by it, like looking like PS2. The stage is far more intimate, uh, and like there is a lot. Everyone's just so much closer together, and it's just going to be a lot more interaction. Uh, it's harder to build that space, like you're saying, you know. And uh, yeah. A rough one for sure, and we're getting to see that, or like right off the bat, uh, despite the punish coming out uh, from Ragnarok. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Yikes. so yeah, blue team uh, starting off at a pretty strong lead right now. Only 60 damage. 60 damage is like basically nothing, you know. Like you still need to like lose a whole turn to get properly punished to get to a point where you're like knocking on death's door, and that's and that's from a single sentiment, you know. That it can be even harder to like lock out those kills and doubles just because. You have a doubles partner watching your back, you know. Yeah, it's almost like you you really need to divide and conquer and force two v ones all over the place. But a great uh, great call out on the ledge on the neutral getup coming out from Ragnarok. That's an important start. But you're in the same almost the same spot you were in game one, where like do you ignore Solcer and let uh, and let them run around rampant with this Charizard that could start killing you uh, now? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, stretches out of here on his last stock already. We're now at even stocks. That's such a huge reversal, and it's exactly the play that they made in game one. It's like, yeah. all right, we're not going to worry about Charizard. They can be extremely hard to kill. We're going to focus Lucina, focus on stretch, and see if we can push him to the limit. Yep. I mean, it's hard to edge guard Lucina with one character in a one-on-one, -on -one, but a two-on-one, -on -one, you can force Lucina to Dolphin Slash extremely early. Yep. I do want to point out that the blue team is still technically uh, in the lead and now in the lead. I uh, was literally going to say because both red team players are on their last, uh, were both really high percent on their second stock that if they both die, blue team is now in, in a good position. Because uh, now, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is good. Uh, good out of ten, I, I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, here we get to see uh, the fa the speed of Mithra kind of blazing through uh, stretches uh, defense. The, I mean, the power of Mithra, right? Like they they play like with Lucina's buttons, but but with a fast faller. Oh no! What is happening? Oh my god! And Yo, the, I the love turn. the fact that he just throws out the, <laughs> the Pyro F smash. It's as strong as Ganon's, but with half the end lag. It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh the discipline. And he tried. They tried. They tried. They tried. They tried. Oh, this, please. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna land, and I'm Boom. gonna. I'm gonna flick the C stick. That's what. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, I wanted another one. Man, this is such a good position for blue team having an extra stock in the reserves because all the percentages are going up uh, pretty much together, which means, you're, yeah, we're in a blue team now in a, yeah, yeah. peace out. Where do you go? Nowhere. Really strong counterplay. Yeah, that, I mean, everyone died at once uh, to stretches up smash out of shield. Just complete reset, which is, the, defini uh, the defining point of that game three in my eyes because being able to reset everybody simultaneously, including your teammate, means that everything is going to progress forward linearly, presumably, uh, regarding like 
edge guards and, and cheesy early stocks notwithstanding, if everything progresses linearly, but you're up by one stock, then that should mean that Sulcer would would be left the last one standing, yep. which is a win for blue team. Yep. In that case, it was a two stock victory, but the same thing applies. Yeah, that's always like the thing about it's just like, yep, I'm gonna. It's like whenever you have a stock lead in any situation, it's just right. like time to go even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time to trade. Yeah. Let's trade stocks. Yep.